If you're watching the real estate news, you're hearing a real estate crash is coming. But is that real estate crash going to include the housing market? Also in the news, we saw rates pushing 7% again. So what's causing rates to go so high and when will they come down? We're talking about all of this with our good friend Brent Starts from Unitas Lending. And also at the end of this video, Brent's going to explain to you several ways to be able to purchase a home right now with a much lower rate. So don't go anywhere. Hi, my friends. If this is the first time you've been to my channel, my name is Lee Bricky. And on this channel, we talk everything real estate from Palm Beach County to the Treasure Coast. So if any of that interests you, you're going to want to subscribe. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. So you don't miss any of our real estate tips and tours. And with that said, Let's talk with our good friend, Brent Starts. Hey, Brent, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate you uh, coming on so we can talk about what's happening in the market and how people can navigate it. So today we're talking about why does the media keep talking about the real estate market's going to crash, man? So uh, that's going all over the news right now that real estate's going to crash and, uh, reading articles by like guys like grant cardone they're not talking about the housing market they're talking about the uh commercial real estate market because it's taken such a beating starting with yeah. covid uh you know the market uh, all these companies people started working from home so we saw like one of our clients work for t-mobile uh, they shut right. them offices down and put everybody at home. So that's not changed. So a lot of people now are working from home more than ever before. And companies are saving that office space money. And we're seeing more and more of that happening. So it's leaving a lot of uh, office space available out there. And, and it's a real problem because of mortgage rates. These guys can't refinance these buildings. So yes. they're looking at foreclosures. So, you mm -hmm. know, if we had... 10 million dollars we'd be in a good spot right now we could go buy some of this some of this real estate up and that's what these guys that are worth 100 million dollars are doing and right. then also there's uh you know there are opportunities um with reits real estate investment mm -hmm. trust so that's another thing that's coming along so there's going to be some opportunities in the real estate market but it's not going to be with housing uh, do you agree it's not with, with housing it's with commercial yeah as you as you, you bring up a very good point you know uh, Commercial loans, commercial real estate loans in particular, uh, they're typically adjustable loans, five-year fixed, two-year fixed, three-year fixed types of uh, transactions. So when they refinance those loans, you know, during COVID in, you know, 2000, 2021, a lot of those are beginning to expire uh, and or rather adjust. And so uh, those indices have gone up. And so those those loans will be adjusting and there's going to be some negotiating going on between lenders and, and, um, and landlords, frankly. And so, and like you say, Lee, uh, there's technology available now. We can measure productivity productivity as employers now. So we know that people can indeed work from home and they can work from Ohio less expensively than they say New York City. And so uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, workplace uh, displacement, right? So uh, it's, right. it's uh, kind of a perfect storm from commercial real estate. You can speak more to the 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 uh, the market here as far as residential, but what I'm seeing on the, in the front lines is definitely, we're still seeing appreciation here in Florida. Uh, it's, you know, real estate's yeah, very Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Because with mortgages, you're actually seeing a tick up in mortgage applications right now. Absolutely. Rates have been all over the board in the last two or three months because of the, you know, what the uh, expectations were from the Fed. They were expecting five to six uh, cuts, you know, for the uh, next, uh, you know, over the next 12 months. And now with the uh, CPI coming out mid month, uh, a little higher than expected, it was expected to come in at 3.1% year over year and it came in at 2.9. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit more than expected. So uh, the inflation number came in high and the jobs report early on uh, the January numbers were 353,000 new jobs were created in January is what the, the federal, uh, the BLS report, Bureau of Labor Statistics, that's the federal 
jobs report. However, uh, the survey showed a 60,000 uh, job loss overall, net losses. So the numbers weren't quite jiving between the, the household survey and the BLS numbers. And then ADP report came out showing 117,000 new jobs. So uh, a lot of uh, varying information as far as the jobs report. Uh, we're going to see the next jobs report come out next week, next Friday. So that could be a, a potential market mover because it might have been a one-off last month. Right. Well, gas prices are definitely up. We're seeing that food prices are moving back upward. Um, mm -hmm. So we're seeing that. So, I mean, as long as oil and gas prices continue to go up, we're going to see, you know, goods and services continue to go up because they have to pay for it. Uh, there's an article out at Forbes talking about mortgage rate forecast for 2024, what experts are predicting. And, you know, last year experts were predicting we'd be in the fives, five and a half by the end of the year. Now, Freddie Mac saying maybe 6% at the end of the year, six and a half, six percent You have a National Association of Realtors saying, you know, 6 to 7%. Mortgage Bankers Association saying 6.1 to 5.5, maybe. Experts on this, it's it's all within, seven, mostly between 6, 7 and 6% is right. where we're going to see mortgage rates by, towards the end of the year, just because the economy is still running hot and there's no way by they see by the end of the year that it's going to be slowing down so yeah about a month ago rates we locked a loan at six and an eighth about a month a little over a month ago when right i know you know right. and, and so you know and that's and when there were some six, opportunities at six and a half there for a little bit yeah yeah now we're in the high sixes right now the market's right around seven but the the the, the market had three, excuse me, five to six cuts baked into the, to the, those figures. And now there's about three or four cuts baked in as far as, uh, you know, rate cuts in the next uh, year. So that's, right. that's the difference. It was all on the jobs report, all on CPI. Those two reports are what really threw the numbers off as far as or the expectations off from uh, what's expected from the Fed. Right. Talk a little bit about this uh, U.S. Treasury. They just sold off $42 billion dollars. Uh, at yeah. four percent, for almost a little bit, a little bit under four point one percent. Talk about that because that's the biggest ever in ten years. Bloomberg says it's amazing what happened this last week, and you, you know, look at two five seven two, two five and seven year treasuries. The volume this last week was one hundred and sixty eight billion dollars of treasury debt was auctioned off, Lee, and so. That's like a record. That's a, tre a tremendous amount of debt to give give people an idea of how much money that is. That's one million dollars, one hundred and sixty eight thousand times. That's how much money the federal government borrowed this week to pay bills, to refinance the debt that was expiring, that type of thing. So that's a tremendous amount of debt. And so it's really important for people to understand this as we spend money on, you know, the things we're spending money on, um, you know, entitlements or, you know, war efforts, things like that. Uh, there is a cost to that. And so that has to be financed. And what, what happens with mortgage rates and how that relates to it, uh, it's institutional investors, the same investors buy that treasury debt typically as mortgage debt. Your mortgage is, is someone else's investment. So we go into the marketplace and we say, hey, we've got a 7% loan uh, that we'd like to sell to you. It's going to be a 7% return. Would you want it? Because, well, we can get the, the treasuries with no no risk at all. It's backed by the federal government, you know, and we're getting a, a return of uh, 5%. We're going to put our money in that. There's no, we don't have to deal with foreclosures or anything like that. And so we have to raise rates to track that money back, if you will, during auctions, because these are auctioned off. The debt has to be sold and the, tre and the treasury debt has to be sold too, because the United States government has to pay their bills. So imagine right. an auction where a sale has to happen. And so you have to raise rates until you're selling off your your debt. In other words, it could be mortgages, it could be uh, uh, treasury bills. Uh, so that's the, we're in the same marketplace, if you will. So when all that supply hits, it's a simple supply and demand thing, right? So you got all that supply hitting. So when it all hits, that has to be sopped up and you have to raise rates. So that's the danger. And that's really the elephant in the room. A lot of people aren't talking about um, these, these figures. That well, come they out are talking out. about it. I mean, I heard the other day that, you know, like these 30 year mortgages that are sitting out there, bonds, you know, they're, they're not, no one wants to touch them because how are you going to know what the, what it's going to be worth? I mean, they're looking at right. a loss and right. then You're banks are struggling still. And no one's talking about that because they're holding all this debt. That's not worth anything anymore. They're upside down on a lot of their investments. 
Uh, so right. it's a real problem. And, and, you know, this, this debt that we're accumulating, people think that it's free, you know, they get right. stuff for free and nothing's free. And the reason we're in this housing market crisis that we're in where there's no homes and their average, you know, um, average home price nationwide 400 grand and young people can't afford to buy a home is because of all this debt that, that we're, right. we're, we've created and, you know, stupid policies like leaving rates super low. And then that's mm. put the banks into pro and in, into situations because no one expected this high of inflation and you can't see down the road other than people like Jamie Dimon who have been talking this for, you know, a long time now that we're heading for a wall here. And if we don't do something about it, it's going to be a, a, a bad situation for the United States. And let's move on to talking about should people wait to buy with mm -hmm. these um, high rates? And, you know, we've said it before, if you're, if you're going to be cash poor buying a home, you shouldn't buy a home. But if you're in a position where you can buy a home, waiting for rates to come down might be a real problem. Um, I I'll drop a video in. I know, you know, who Barry Haib is. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, he, he had a really interesting video, uh, out that was, he broke down why it doesn't make sense to wait and, you know, pulling up the numbers this year after the market was so weak last year, because it was, it was one of the worst markets we've had. We're still seeing prices go up. And, and, and so, We'll drop that Barry Habib video in. I think it's something mm -hmm. that people should watch if you're thinking, you know, hey, I want to wait. But NAR just came out with this statistic that for every 1% drop, 5 million buyers get into the market. Right. So where are we at right now? 7%? Right. So, if we, so dropping 1% one, 1 to 6% puts a another 5 million. If we go to 5%, there's, 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 there's uh 10 million people back into the market buying. So right. there still is, even though prices have gotten a little better with new construction, we've been able to make some good deals on resales. There's some right. inventory out there. There's still not enough. If rates come down to 6% or five, and especially if they reach five and a half percent, because sellers are still sitting on their homes because they're at two and a half to three percent, three and a right. half percent. So I wanted to show some numbers real quick and get your opinion on this. But I know you talk about this a lot. So looking at Port St. Lucie as a whole, the medium home price right now in, in, in January 2023 was three hundred ninety thousand two fifty eight. OK, that's mm -hmm. plus five thousand dollars in last year that homes have gone up. So we're still seeing appreciation. And when you watch Barry Hybee's video, he goes back all the way to 1968 to 2023 and shows you how there's only been just a few times where prices have actually come down, but historically prices have continued to go up. Uh, right. And then if you look at Martin County, prices are up 37,000 Oh, almost $38,000 over the last year from 2023 to now 2024. And then in Palm Beach County, we're up again, almost $30,000, 6.9% in appreciation in the medium home price. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have seen some price reductions, but I don't think they're price drops. I think they're more price reductions mm -hmm. where you know, people are still trying to get these crazy numbers and they're not getting it. So they're having to lower their prices. And we've just done a couple of deals that, you know, our folks have really super happy about the, 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 the purchase they've gotten on a resale. And if you're buying new construction right now, you're really happy because there's most of these builders have big incentives right now. So right. talk into this a little bit about, you know, waiting and, in ways that people don't have to wait. Right. Well, you know, you know, those, those price increases, you, you have to remember that's in the face of the highest and fastest increase in interest rates in modern history. 
you know, exactly. it's uh, in the face of that. So imagine as rates drop, which we pretty much know they will, uh, that's it. That's definitely in the cards in this, just how much in the next, in the next 12 months, it's all going to be data dependent, of course, but that's, that's what we see when, when rates drop, more people introduce or, you know, enter the marketplace, then you're competing for, uh, the same number of homes. And of course that raises, increases prices. I mean, that's just the way it works. Um, so that's just a matter of math as well. So it's more about affordability. Everyone wants to buy a home still that hasn't changed. That, that demand is solid. It's a matter of home affordability. When that affordability becomes uh, available for more and more people, it just increases the, uh, the number of competitors out there that you're competing with to purchase a, a limited number of available homes. And so that will force prices up. That's just math. Right. So also, you know, there's still these buy down programs, right? right. So, right. and talk about real attractive, right. We, and there's yeah, a one, you know, there's a one Oh buy down plan, right? You just, you just buy down for one year, which turns right. out to be what about four or five grand. Yeah. And so exactly. And so in a, a seller, you know, in a seller concession, they can actually pay for it. And it's a great way for sellers to move their home more quickly. And you could buy the rate down. Let's say uh, right now we're locking loans around the 6.7 range. They could have a 5.7 interest rate the first year, and then it goes to 6.7. And with that, we're actually paying for the appraisal up to $600 to, to offer that program. Cause we want people to do this because we know that rates are going to drop down. Eventually it helps people get into the home, making an affordable payment and then, uh, take Take advantage of the refinance opportunities. So that way you're not buying the rate down for the full 30 years. It's just buying the rate down for one year because we know that's the, the trend is going to be down on rate. So I think that's the best strategy, either a 2-1 buy down, a 1-1 one, one buy down, or a 1-0 oh buy down where you're buying that rate down uh, in the form of a con seller, uh, seller concession is one way to do it or through the uh, points actually. You can do it that way. So you actually pay right. for it yourself. But we try to have sellers pay for it in this market. You know, Lee, you're doing a great right job. Right now, we're in a buyer's sessions. market. I mean, it is a buyer's market. Yeah. I don't really care where you are. I mean, we've gotten forty and fifty thousand dollar discounts on homes here recently. So, right um, now, they're big. You know, big homes, but you know, they're, they're you know, you're talking about eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollar homes. But the mm -hmm. the reality is that you know we're seeing folks buy homes right now for way less than they would have three years ago. But so as long as the house will appraise. Uh -huh. They can get that seller credit and that can really help them close on a home. Talk into before we get off the phone because uh, here off the video here, because you have um, we've been doing something special with these um, with these uh, reverse purchases. Talk into that a little bit. Let because I want to keep pushing that. That's been yeah. a great program with this reverse purchase. And a lot of these builders will allow you to go ahead and get the um, incentive without having to use their their lender because you're coming with something that their lender doesn't use and their lender definitely doesn't do uh, reverse purchases. So talk into that because that has been here lately a really great program for folks that are selling a home somewhere uh, and they don't have enough to buy the home they want here in Florida. It's a wonderful program, Lee. We're all about solving problems, right? I mean, if you look at what, you know, who are our clientele is right now? We're seeing people move from the the, the northeast, the northeastern seaboard, uh, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey. That's one one of our you know prime markets. That, that you know, as far as those that are purchasing homes here in Port St. Lucie, and, and if anybody here doesn't think I love New York, here's my New York cup. I love New York. <laughs> no, I love them. I, <laughs> right, I, I I love New York, but I love I love the people that move down to Florida from New York too. So. <laughs> we love them and we don't blame them. Right, Lee? Mm -mm. Absolutely. Nope. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So in, in and the how do you blame people for moving down? We've had the best winter we've ever had. It's been beautiful. Oh, it's been gorgeous. And, and people yeah. moving up from Miami, uh, Miami Dade and, and Broward counties for affordability. So, right. Uh, you know, the the crowd. Crowd. oh, yeah. it's a, it's really, you think about it. That's really, if you go back, you know, and it's for certainly the loans and, and purchases we've helped you with. Um, that's really been the lion's share of the market. So what do we do when someone's retiring? You know, they thought they were going to purchase a home and retire in Florida and they, and they were going to buy a home for $300,000 four years ago. Well, that plan has changed now that they're retiring, their income is coming to a halt. They're going to a fixed income of maybe social security and maybe a small pension, that type of thing. And so what they really wanted to do was purchase a home without a mortgage payment. That's what they really wanted. Now that same home is 550. 
And so how do I do that when interest rates are seven and my incomes drop? So all those problems are hitting at the same time. So this reverse for purchase is something that's really taking off because we have this program. Again, builders don't offer us banks, credit unions. It's a specific brokerage type scenario that, that you can offer this type of program. But for a sizable down payment, that $300,000 you plan to pay for your home here in Florida, you put that down as a down payment and uh, you can buy that $550,000 home, not have to sacrifice as far as the quality of the home or the location, that type of thing. And you still accomplish the, um, the, uh, the goal of not having a mortgage payment, just having the taxes and insurance. You have to keep that current, of course. You have to be, you have to be 62 years of age, uh, 55 in some proprietary programs we have, but 62 is typically the type of program that we work with. And then there's no mortgage payment at all. Uh, so it's a great way for retirees to still get the home they want in a safe area uh, and make that uh, you know, home ownership here in Florida possible. And for folks moving up from Broward, Miami-Dade, we're seeing a lot of them take advantage of it as well because uh, they can purchase an affordable home, retire in a, a beautiful area and, and uh, accomplish the, the goal of having cash flow too and not, not having to worry about, you know, their, their, uh, you know, their pension or their social security trying to cover a mortgage payment and all the other living costs. So it's a, it's a great strategy and we're, uh, hey, we have a lot of success with it. We're going to, I want to have you on the webinar, Lee. I want to ask you, ask you publicly, <laughs> we're going to have you, uh, we're going to invite you on because we had a couple of scenarios that worked out so well for folks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's be been good. It's week. been really good. And I know people are a little afraid of the reverse mortgage. They, they, right. you know, they, they, they hear horror stories about it and it, it's just, it's just really all fear mongering. Uh, and, and so if you, if you have a question about doing a reverse purchase, reverse mortgage, Brent is definitely the person to reach out to. He's been doing them for 25 years. He knows everything about it. This was created under the Reagan administration, and uh, it's a good program. I have several of my friends and clients that have done reverse mortgages on their home, and now we're doing these reverse purchases because uh, this is something new that's coming along. And, and it's really a great program for folks that you know, are retiring and they just want to enjoy where they live, buy a little bit more house than maybe they could have uh, and, 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 and not have that, that, that payment hanging over your head and not even have to worry about it. It's just, you know, right. pay your taxes, pay your, keep the house up and your insurance. And if you have an HOA, you have to pay that. But other than that, the house is there and the equity is still growing in it. And down the right. road, you can take some money out of it if you want need to as the equity grows. And then you can uh, same as if you own that, the, if you had a, mo a regular mortgage on the house, you can right. will that home over to your children um, or your family members. And, you know, that that that's all it all still works out the same way. The mortgage company just needs to get paid. That's it. So. Right. right? It's a great it's program. Amazing. It's a right. great program. So, all the same options. You can still sell your home. You can still uh, refinance it. You can do all those things. So, uh, yeah, a lot of there's a lot of misconceptions around it, and I think a lot of it was when those first uh, when those first programs were released uh, when the Reagan administration offered to make this possible, uh, and the FHA came in to uh, to oversee it to uh, have counseling. So there is a counseling class you, you take with the the program, so you fully understand the numbers, and so it's a uh, it, it, there's it's a non recourse loan. So in other words. Uh, you, the balance of your loan will never get greater than your your home's value, so you're not strapping your your uh, your heirs with anything. It's a it's a great program. It's a little, little more involved, a little more learning, a little more of a learning curve, but uh, we walk people through it all the time, and it's a it's a great solution for the right right folks. Right. Well, listen, if if anyone out there wants to get more information on this, um, my information's on the screen right now with Brent. Uh, I'll leave his information in the information section below. You can reach out to him directly by email or phone call. He'd love to talk to you about this, answer any questions, any mortgage information that you need to learn about, buying a home here in Florida, reach out to Brent. He does an amazing job. No one can beat his rates. No one can beat his closing costs. He'll work hard for you. And if you got a little crusty credit that needs to be fixed, <laughs> he can uh, help you a little bit with that and, and kind of lead you in the right direction so you can get into that home of your dreams. That's really the, the point of this video and me bringing him on uh, every single month and letting him talk to you. So Brent, thanks a lot for joining me today and sharing this. We'll, we'll do this again for sure. And thanks for having me. Lee. Look, Always great. Yeah, to man. You. I really appreciate it. And if you like this video, please like this video. We really, really appreciate it. I know Brent does and I do too. Let's us know that you uh, enjoy the content that we're putting out. Also, 
Again, if you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us directly or you can leave a comment in the comment section. We'll always uh, answer those comments. So Brent, thanks again. And we'll see you the next time that you join us, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It lets me know that we're creating the right kind of content for you learning about the real estate market here in South Florida. Also, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and slap that subscribe button right there. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our real estate tips and tours. And you can also hit that video right there and learn more about the market here in Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast. Be kind to each other and I'll see you in the next video.